Hello, everyone. How are you? Good afternoon. Hello. Good afternoon, sir. Can you see my screen? Yes, sir. So we still have uh, two more minutes to start. Uh, let's just wait for everyone and then we can start. So in the meantime, if you're already here, uh, do you have any questions from last time? Okay. So I already have uploaded the course outline um, and the class notes that we were taking and um, I also uploaded the lecture video video of the lecture on YouTube. I think I already have posted the link. So if you missed some part or if you were not able to take um, I mean attend the lecture, uh, you can watch that video. <laughs> Uh, class schedule is not in my authority uh, and in my hand, so I really cannot change it. So if you if you want to change it, please talk to to the administration. And if they find it suitable that everyone is willing and ready, uh, then they can change it. So, so please talk to them, and if, if they are if they are okay, they can change it. The thing is that this time was already announced and uh, everyone who enrolled into this course uh, was, was aware of, of the timing, right? Uh, so if you change it right now, it could be a problem for maybe one or two or few students. So we cannot just do it. Uh, I mean, I, I cannot do it at my end. So if we talk to the administration or maybe registrar's office and if, if our program office, so if they are willing or if they, if they can uh, find a suitable Okay, I think we can start. It's already 6.30. So last time uh, we talked about um, some, I mean, the first lecture was the introduction lecture and we talked about the course, why this course is important or where does it apply in the entire curriculum of CS. And we also talked about um, some basic stuff, uh, stuff from, from the stores and some basic computation model, discussion about some basic computation model. And then we started our discussion about strings. <clears throat> so if you have any question about strings, uh, let me know before we proceed, uh, proceed any further. Uh, are all the structures and proof topics from chapter zero? Yes, they are part of. Uh, they are part of it. Okay, so let us start. So let me revise a few things that uh, from last time, and then we can continue. So last time we talked about string, and before we talked about string, we talked about alphabet. Right. Usually, the alphabet is denoted by a, a capital sigma. Okay, and this alphabet is a set. It's a set of characters or symbols. Okay, uh, these characters and symbols are the basic building blocks. 
option. As an easier example, you can think of an alphabet as ASCII code. Are you all aware of ASCII codes? Do you know ASCII codes? Now, more formally, now we also have Unicodes. So are you all aware of ASCII codes? So there are 256 different ASCII codes and these ASCII codes, since they are 256, so we just need uh, one byte uh, to store or eight bits. So these eight bits or one byte can uh, give us ASCII codes from zero all the way to 255 and uh, different symbols and characters that we find on our keyboard and, and text files and other things are there. They are already there. So, so for example, capital A to capital Z, uh, zero through nine, um, and some other, and small a to small z, and other symbols like plus, minus, uh, star, division, percentage, and, and so many other some special symbols, including the um, uh, parentheses and uh, braces and brackets and other, uh, I mean, punctuation symbols and so on. So these, all these symbols have a specific ASCII code. And that ASCII code basically uh, tells the computer that what symbol it has to show on the screen. Right? So you can think about this ASCII code as a big alphabet that contains 256 different symbols. Or you can think about a subset of this alphabet containing just capital eight through Z and zero through nine, right? So an alphabet is basically a set of symbols or set of characters which you can use to build different strings. So any string that you use in, in, in your programming, in, in writing your program, for example, in Java or C, C++ or Python, uh, so everything is a string, right? So in, including the strings that you use as a string data type, plus the code itself is a, is a long chain of strings, right? It's a long string. So that string is made up of all these characters, these 256 characters that we use, uh, that we, some of them we see on, on, on the keyboard, some of them are hidden. Uh, but these are, uh, this is just the alphabet. Okay, so this alphabet of ASCII code contains 256 characters, uh, but we not all the time we require that huge uh, S alphabet. So sometimes we will just have an alphabet of two symbols or three symbols or five symbols, or maybe 10 symbols, or maybe sometimes just one symbol. Uh, okay. So I, I did not say that. Uh, so the question is that in the last lecture, I said uh, string over an alphabet is always finite. No, the string is is not, not finite. Uh, I, I did not say that. Actually, uh, what I said was that this, alf this alphabet sigma is a fixed and finite. Okay. This is fixed and finite. So the, the question of infinity is it's rather difficult uh, concept, especially in, in the context of computer science. So I, I hope and assume that you all, all have done uh, discrete mathematics and you have some good idea about infinity, right? Uh, and, and different kinds of infinity. Uh, so, so, so the smallest or the simplest thing that we can think about or talk about infinity is that Infinity is not a number. Okay, infinity is not a number. For example, if I consider the set of natural numbers, then the set of natural numbers consists uh, contains zero, one, two, three, and so on. Right. So all these elements in this natural number, all elements in set of natural numbers, are numbers. And since infinity is not a number, therefore infinity does not belong to a set of natural numbers. Even though the size of natural numbers is infinite, there are infinitely many numbers in the set of natural numbers, but infinite itself is not part of it, right? So there's this uh, distinction between infinite, different kinds of infinites, right? So infinity is not a number. Infinity is a concept, but it's not a number. So infinity does not belong to such a num uh, such set of natural numbers. Infinity also does not belong to the set of real numbers or uh, infinity also does not belong to the set of complex numbers or any number system that we can think of right now or the number systems that we use, right? 
So it does not belong to these set. So infinity is not a number, right? Uh, that's what I try to say about the sigma. That sigma is fixed and finite. So when I say it's finite, then the size of the sigma must be a number from the set of natural numbers. This is what I said. Okay. Anyway, so let's move on to strings. So when we talk about string, we say a string over an alphabet. And a string over an alphabet means that a string composed of symbols from the alphabet. Suppose we fix this sigma as, let's say, a zero and one. In this particular case, we can define many different strings. Uh, so let's define a string just zero or string just one or string zero zero or zero one or one zero or one one or one zero zero or one zero one and so on and so forth. So we can define many different strings. Right? So there could be infinitely many strings. There could be infinitely many strings, right? So there could be one string, two strings, three strings, five strings, one billion strings, or infinitely many strings, okay? And these strings can have arbitrary length. So we can have strings of length one, strings of length two, strings of length three, strings of length 500, strings of length one billion, strings of length maybe uh, five trillion, and so on and so forth. So we would have a string and that string, once we have a string is of finite size. This could be arbitrarily large and we can have arbitrarily many strings and we can have infinitely many strings. But each individual string will, have, will be of finite size, right? So the size of the string is finite. It could be very large, but it is finite, but it cannot be fixed, right? So we can construct a string of size three from the same alphabet. At the same time, we can construct a string of size billion from the same alphabet, even though the alphabet consists of only two symbols. And we don't also, we, we actually, we don't need two symbols. We can have just when one symbol and we can have strings of arbitrary length. So consider this alphabet that contains just one symbol, zero. How many strings you can construct from, from this symbol? You can construct an empty string that is without anything. Then you can have a string of length one, then a string of length two, then a string of length three, and a string of length four, and so on and so forth, right? So you can have any string of length of any length, right? One, two, three, four. So whatever string you will have, so let's, let's say A is a set that contains these strings, that it contains empty string, it contains zero, it contains zero, zero, it contains zero, 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 and so on. All its possible strings of this, uh, from this, uh, Set alphabet. Then clearly, clearly, um, A is an infinite, set, right? However, each string that is inside A is of finite size because the number of elements, number of zeros that we can have, will be a number. And since infinity is not is not a number, therefore, each string will be of finite size but there are infinitely many strings in the set A. Is this thing clear? Yes, sir. sir? Yes. Yes, yes, yes please. Sir, uh, sir uh, I didn't get one point. How can we construct uh, many, many sets using the uh, Sigma Vala set? Uh, no, no, uh, it's not clear. I did not get it. What, what, what you're trying to say? Uh, according to me, I think we can only construct two sets using the sigma set, right? The uh, empty why set and sets? the Because it has only one element, no, sir. Then we can construct only, only two sets. Yeah, one so the the, that, is, that is true. That is true for if you are constructing power set of sigma. We are not constructing power set of sigma. We are constructing symbols or we are, we are constructing strings from the symbols of the alphabet. So. So suppose I, I tell you that um, uh, you, you are only allowed to use zero and one, okay? You are only allowed to use zero and one. Can you construct any possible number using, using these two symbols? So 
So the question is. No, I don't think so. We can. Can you construct any possible number n from the set of natural numbers using, so let's call it sigma, using symbols from sigma? Can you? So there could be two answers, right? No and yes. So how many of you say no? And how many of you no. say yes? Yes, sir, we can. Yes, is there anyone who says yes? Yes, Okay, sir. is there anyone who says no? No, sir. No, there's no one who says no? Are you sure? No, sir. S sir, I don't think we can sir, construct uh, any possible. Can, okay, so can you explain why the... we cannot construct? Yeah, any, anyone who thinks sir, that we, the answer are... is no, anyone who thinks that the answer is no, can uh, explain why this is the answer. Okay, sir. So we can construct can the numbers five? that contain zero and one, but not the all numbers. For example, we cannot construct 12, but we can construct 11 or 101. Okay. Is this your answer as well? Uh, I don't know what was your name. Uh, Sir, if, if, we, if we talk about binary numbers, then we can construct every number using these two numbers. But if we, uh, if we are told to, if we are told that we can only use zero and one and construct any number, mm -hmm. then we can cannot construct any okay, number. So let me allow. So uh, let us allow binary numbers. Then we can construct any number, sir. Then you construct, right? So the answer is basically yes, yes and no is not correct. For example, right? if you if you are... yeah, yeah, please go go ahead. Sir, yes. If we are told to, uh, if you want to construct three, then we can uh, we can write one one one. No, one zero one. Are you getting me, sir? Yeah, I'm getting. I'm getting. Yeah. So zero is just zero. Sir. One is uh, one zero one. Uh, zero one and sorry. Two is one zero. Three is one zero one. Four is one uh, one zero. Sorry, there is one one zero zero and so on. Right? Is this thing clear? So we can use yes. just these two symbols to create every num every natural number that we can find in a set of natural numbers, but that number has to be represented using binary, right? Now let's go back to our example. The same thing can be applied to this sigma, which contains just one element. And this one element can also be used to represent each and every number in the set of natural numbers, but this time it won't be binary, it would be unary. So we can say this is number zero, this is number one, this is number two, this is number three, this is number four, and so on and so forth. So the number of zeros present in a string actually represent the number, the natural number that it represents, right? So there are zero zeros here, therefore it is zero. There's one zero here, therefore it is one. There are two zeros here, therefore it is two and so on and so forth. So this is called unary number system. Right? So we can, we can define a unary number system. Right? We can define binary number system, we can define unary number system, we can define any number system that we, uh, that we want. Right? So it's, it's called position number system. It's called the radix. Red X1, Red X2, Red X3, and so on and so forth. But that's not the point. The point is that even with a very simple and a small uh, sigma, we can construct infinitely many strings. So if you have just one symbol in, in sigma or two symbols or three symbols or five symbols, it doesn't matter. We can always construct infinitely many strings. So depending on the size of the sigma, our, the variety in the strings will, will vary. Uh, either those strings will just contain zeros or zeros and ones or zeros and ones and twos and so on and so forth. Or 
uh, I mean, this is one possibility, but we can still construct infinitely many strings, right? Is this thing clear? Is, is, is the distinction clear between these two things? Yes. Any, qu any questions so far? Okay. So, so now we are very clear about what is an alphabet. So we are clear about that. We are also clear about strings, right? If there is any confusion about any of these topics, just let me know so that uh, we don't face any problem in, in, in the later class. So can uh, because we would be using them a lot. Uh, okay, can, can you repeat your question? What is alphabet? What is alphabet? Alphabet is the set of symbols that contains the symbols which are the building blocks. The symbol that we use to construct this thing, right? So suppose the sigma contains A and B, and all the strings that we can construct using this sim, uh, this sigma uh, would be strings of A's and B's, right? In any order, clear? Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay. So, for example, if you open, uh, I mean, if if you pick English dictionary then all the words that you find in English dictionary are the words which are made up of English alphabet, right? So the English alphabet, so let's say uh, you call it E. This English alphabet, no, not a good idea. Uh, so let's say you have the sigma and the sigma contains English alphabet, A, B, C, and Z. So with these 26 symbols, you can construct each and every possible word in English language, right? Yes. So concatenation with alphabet is possible, but we don't talk about it right now. We will talk about it later. Uh, so just concentrate on, on strings, okay? So let's come back to our uh, example here and let's say our stigma contains just A and B, okay? Uh, can you construct some strings? Just give me five strings over uh, the sigma. Quickly. A, B, B, A, A, B, B, A, B, B, A, A, B, B, A, B, A, B, A, B, So we can have many. Right, many different strings and so on. Now suppose uh, we have these strings, okay? These are different strings. And I say that I construct a set containing all these strings, right? Okay. So this is a set that contains one, two, three, four, five, and six strings. So we say, we say A is language. over sigma, okay? So I have not defined what is a language, but I'm, I've just given you an example that what in this particular case, A is a language. So the definition of a language is, you say that a language over an alphabet sigma is set of strings over the alphabet sigma. This is the definition of a language. So can we say that the language is a set of finite strings? Uh, what, why do we say finite strings? What do you mean by finite strings? Like uh, over here, if you look over the examples, there are five strings in our uh, set of language, no? That's no. what I mean. Uh, the language does not specify finiteness uh, because a language could be infinite. And we will see many different examples where a language is infinite. In this particular case, A is a finite language. Uh, some languages are finite and there are many more languages which are not finite. So there are more languages which are not finite than the languages which are finite. Okay. And we will prove that claim as well. So there are more languages which are not finite than the languages which are finite. So a, a language could be finite, it could be infinite because it depends, because since language is a set, 
So everything that we know about set also applies here. Set could be an empty set, a set could be a finite set, set could be an infinite set, set could be an infinitely countable set, set could be an uh, infinitely uncountable set and so on. Yes, uh, what was the question? Sir, can we say that uh, all the strings in a language share some uh, similar properties? Uh, we will define it later on that way, but that does it, that is not the requirement of the definition of a language. A language is just a set of strings. Regardless if there is any pattern, if there is any similarity, if there is any um, sequence, it doesn't matter. A language is just a set of strings. That set could be finite set, that set could be an infinite set, that set could be an empty set, right? Because an empty so, set is a set. Yeah, so can we say that, um, is there a possibility that there's a language which contains all the strings uh, we can possibly create from an alphabet? Of course, we can. Okay. So from this point onwards, we will spend our energies on classification of language. So just because a language is just a, a set of strings, then we will say that, okay, if I have an alphabet, then with this alphabet, I can construct infinitely many strings. So this is string, maybe this is string, maybe this is string. So there are infinitely many strings. And all these strings may share some property. They may not share any property. So depending on the properties of the strings inside a set, we will classify these languages into different categories. Okay? And for each different category of, of languages, we will construct a computational model which will accept those strings. And by accepting, I will uh, explain it later on, but just uh, bear with me that, the, that one of the purpose of this, this uh, course is the classification of languages. And this is usually one of uh, the other alternate name of the course that is formal languages in automata theory. So we talk about languages and a language in automata theory is, is very, uh, it's not similar to, to the natural languages that we speak English or Urdu or any other, any other uh, national language that we speak, but it is also similar in, in many different aspects, but it is not similar in a, in a, in a sense, in a, in a natural sense that we, that we have an idea about the natural language. But anyway, a language is a set of strings. Okay, is this thing clear? Sir? Yes. Yes. Sir, in this case, in this case, can we say a language is a superset of alphabet A? We don't have to say that. It's not a superset. What do you mean by superset? Can you define what is a superset? Yeah, sir, in mathematics, we call superset uh, of set A is superset of set B if it contains all the elements of set B. So, so this language contains all the elements of set uh, alphabet A now, that's all. But that's a very narrow definition over here. I mean, of course, but technically it would be in, I mean, okay. Uh, it could be a superset, but it doesn't have to be. Just, just bear with me. Uh, suppose sigma is A and B, as I said, right? And I say A is a language that contains nothing, right? Why it is, it, is, um, uh, it is okay? Because since A is a, is a set and a set of strings is a language, and since A is a set of strings, while it is a set of strings or set of no strings, so by definition, A is a language. But now A is not a superset of sigma, right? So we don't have to think about supersets and subsets over here. Um, so you can you can just think about the languages as sets of strings. Do not try to confuse with with, with the alphabet, right? Uh, so in some cases there would be a connection. In some cases there won't be any connection, but it doesn't matter. Okay, sir. Thank you. Uh, perfect. Uh, so so all, we are all good. But uh, last time I started a concept called prefix and. Um, I just want to tell, uh, I just want to, uh, I mean, maybe repeat it. Uh, I said that we say that X is called a prefix of a string Y. So X is prefix of Y. So X and Y are both strings over some alphabet. Uh, if there exists a string Z, 
such that uh, such that x z is equal to one. If this is the case, we say say that x is a prefix of one, right? Uh, for example, if I have a string a b a b, then a is a prefix of uh, so over here I will write prefixes. So a is a prefix of this string. A B is a prefix, A B A is a prefix, and A B A B is a prefix, right? So by definition, every string is a prefix of itself, right? So we say that a language is prefix-free, a language is prefix-free if no member is a proper prefix of another member, right? So A is a proper prefix of AB, AB. AB is a proper prefix of AB, AB. AB, A is a proper prefix of this string. And AB, AB is not a proper prefix. It's just a prefix, but not a proper prefix. Anyway, so you don't have to worry about this definition. Uh, when we will use this definition in some um, I mean, examples and some places, I will repeat it. Okay, so we will stop here. And if there is any question, please let me know. Otherwise, I will use these concepts in, in a very related topic. Sir, about the prefix free, uh, well, I don't think there exists any language that is prefix free because an empty, because epsilon will always be there, an empty woe. Well, will always be a prefix, right? Uh, I mean, there is always an empty character within a language, right? Mm -hmm. I can always say that it is always a prefix of any string in that language. Okay, so so let me give a let me give a counter example. Suppose A is a set that contains A and uh, A B in a b b these are just three strings is it a prefix free language or not i'm sorry sir come again is this a prefix free language or not no sir it is a is a proper prefix of a b a b is a proper pre prefix of a b b so it is not a language, it's not a prop, a prop, it's not a prefix. So let's consider another language B. Okay. It contains a string A. Okay. It contains a string B A. That contains a string, let's say, uh, B B A. Okay. So <clears throat> is this a, a prefix free language or not? So A isn't in the prefix, um, but so A is not a proper don't... prefix of any language. B A is not a prefix, proper prefix of any other string, and B B A is not a proper prefix of any other string. Therefore, it is a, a prefix-free language. While this is not a prefix-free language, right? Right? Yes, sir. But don't we count epsilon too in every other? So in every is, other is language epsilon set. is epsilon a member of B? So isn't that given that it, it always is? No, I, I'm asking you. I'm asking you. Is it is it member I, of? Uh, yes or no? Um, I think it is. I may be wrong. Right. So let's consider another language C. It contains epsilon, A, B, A, and B, B, A, okay? Do you think B is equal to C? B is not equal to C, right? B is not equal to C, why? Because B contains three elements, while C contains four elements. The two sets are equal if the number of elements are same, and all elements uh, are same, right? Since there are three elements in B and four elements in C, so B cannot be equal to C. So it's very similar to the concept of empty set. For example, if I have a set A, 
uh, that is empty set. I can also write A as this empty set. But A is not equal to an empty set inside an empty set. Right? These two are different things. Do you remember that? Yes. So if you remember it, fine. <clears throat> so I would highly recommend that you um, get a refresher sir, in discrete mathematics. Yes. Sir, can you quickly repeat uh, uh, the thing you the thing written uh, the steps written after the stop word? Uh, I got disconnected for a moment. Thank you, sir. I just explained uh, what is a string and what is alphabet. That's it. And before that, I define what is a prefix free language. It is not directly connected to what you will be doing uh, right after it. So we can skim through it and um, we can continue with some other discussion. Okay. Okay. So let us um, dig, uh, let us, I mean, dive deep in um, the topic. And we will dive into finite automata. Okay. So a finite automata is a model of computation. Okay. And this is the first model of computation that we will consider in this class. So finite automata is the model of computation that we will consider uh, in this class. And this is the first model of computation and this is the most basic model of computation. Okay. So what is a finite automata? A finite automata is a model of computation with extremely limited memory. It doesn't have much memory, okay? And we will see a lot of examples, but let, let me create an example. <clears throat> so I will draw a finite automata, automaton, and then I will explain that what, what it is. So in this automaton, this is an example. So in this example, I have something, a circle. Inside the circle, I, have, I write Q1. Then I write, I create an arrow, and then I, write Q2 and create double circle, right? Then I write Q3 and single circle. I connect Q2 with Q3 with zero, Q3 with Q2, zero, one, Q2 to Q2 with one. This is one, this is zero, and I create an arrow here, okay? So without me explaining anything at this point. If I draw this picture, what do you understand? What information that you receive from this picture? Is, is it meaningful? Is it conveying anything? Before uh, I explain anything, before I uh, do anything with this example. Um, it depicts some state transitions. Yes, it is state transition, but what is the basics or the most simple thing that you can think about this example? Can I call it a graph? Are you familiar with the concept of graph? Yes, yes, I think so. It's a, it's a graph, right? So a finite automaton, so automata for plural and for one, it's called automaton. So finite automaton for one. And finite automata for multiple. Okay. So finite automaton is basically a graph. It's a, it's a directed graph. It's a kind of directed graph. Okay. We do not consider the, the graph properties uh, with the automaton, but, but we know that it, it looks like a graph because then we have vertices and then we have edges and so on and so forth. So this particular automaton actually uh, does a very simple basic thing, okay? So in this automaton, so let me start labeling it. So this is called the start state or the first state, right? So this is a state, this is a state, this is a state. So Q1 is a state, Q2 is a state, Q3 is a state. So Q1, 
Q2 and Q3 are states. And I will explain what is a state, but just bear with me for a few minutes and it will be clear that what I'm trying to say. Q1, Q2, Q3 are states and Q1 is the start state or sometimes you call it initial state. Okay. Q2 has a has double circles, right? So we say that Q2 is a final state. Okay. Sometimes we also call it accepting state. Okay. And these arrows, these arrows are called transitions. These are called transitions. So let's see that what does it mean? This picture tells us that we are talking about a machine. We are talking about the simplest computational model, which starts with the state Q1. And the machine starts, so we say that the machine starts in the state Q1, okay? And when, once the machine is in the state Q1, it can transition to state Q2 or can stay in Q1. Right? So as long as the machine is in Q1, it can either remain in Q1 or it can go to state Q2. Okay? When it remains in Q1, it has to remain in Q1 by accepting or reading one symbol, which is zero. Right? So don't worry, we will, I will explain each and everything in detail once again. Just try to uh, get a higher level um, explanation of this, right? So this machine has three states. It starts in Q1 and the machine is in Q1 and it, it reads or it scans zero, then it, it stays in Q1. But if it reads one or scans one, it goes to the state Q2. And once the machine is in Q2, we say that the machine is in accepting state or a final state. So for example, if there is no other thing to read, and the machine is said to be an accept or final state and whatever that the machine has already read or scanned is called accepted, okay? But if in this state, this machine reads some more symbols, for example, if it reads zero, then it goes to state Q3. And Q3 is, remember, Q3, remember, is not an accepting state. So once it, it goes to Q3, it can, it, it, it is possible that there is no other uh, symbol left in the input and uh, the machine can stay over there. And in that case, we say that whatever that the machine has read so far is not acceptable. But if in Q3, the machine either reads zero or one. So we have zero comma one. It means that either, either reads zero or one, it goes immediately, immediately to Q2 and stays in Q2 and, and, and the string is considered to be accepted. But in Q2, if it reads one, then it is also considered to be accepted. Okay? Is this in clear? Does it make any sense? Yes, sir. Okay, any question before I go and explain uh, in detail that what is happening? Okay, so let me redraw this uh, machine over here. And so I'm just redrawing it. It's not the new machine, it's the same machine. With zero, it stays here. With one, it goes to Q2. And Q2 is the final state. And if it reads one, it stays there. If it reads zero, it goes to Q3. And it reads zero or one, it comes back to Q2. Now consider there is an input. Uh, just consider the input sequence. The input sequence is one, one, zero, one. Okay. This input sequence is one, one, zero, one. So we start the input from here, from left to right, not from right to left. So this is the first one that we read. So machine, when, when a machine starts, it starts in what state? starts in the initial state or the starting state, right? So machine is in Q1. So what is it reading? 
initially we are in Q1 and we read 1. Where should we go? Q2. Should go to Q2. Now the machine is in Q2 and we, we move to the next symbol, which is 1. Where should we go? We remain in Q2. Q2. We remain in Q2. Right? There is no change of state here. Why? Because in Q2, if it reads one, it stays there. Now, the next symbol is zero. Right? The next symbol is zero. And the current state is Q2. So when in Q2, it reads zero, where should it go? Q3. Q3. It should go to Q3 because at Q2, if it reads zero, it goes to Q3. So now the current symbol is Q3 and our next, I mean, current state is Q3 and our current symbol is one. So when in Q3, if it reads one, where it should go? Q2. It should come back to Q2. Okay. Is there any other character here? Is there any other symbol in the string? No. So it means that this is the end of the string. So we have read the complete string, right? So we read the entire string. Right? So you can think about it from a programming perspective in Java or C++ or Python, uh, that you read one character of the string at a time, and depending on the value of the character, value of the character itself, you decide whether to go to the new state or remain in the same state. And once you have read all, this, all the symbols in the string, you just stop. Okay, so since we read the entire string, so what state did we finish? The accepting state? Q2. And Q2 is an accepting state. It means this input, which was 101, is an acceptable, acceptable string. Right? It is an acceptable string. Right? Now, if you, is this in clear? Yes, sir. Okay. So, so if you remember our first example that I used yesterday, and I said that let us create a very simple machine M, which when input, when it receives an input N, it tells us yes and no, okay? And the question that it asks is, the question is, is N even? So let us construct, so since this is a computational question, right? This is a computational question. So let us create a finite automaton to answer this question. So previously we just had a black box N and I did not show that what is going on inside. So I said that they might be, you can write a Java function or C++ function which, which does it, but C++ or Java is like, I mean, it's, it's like using a cannon to kill a mosquito, right? So using a bazooka to kill a mosquito. So, so we, we do not need that powerful machine. We can, we can only use the simplest uh, computational machine, which we call finite automaton to answer this question. So let us try to understand that how we can uh, question it, okay? So the number over here is N. This N could be represented as a decimal number. It could be represented as an octal number. It could be as represented as an hexadecimal number. It could be represented as a binary number, right? It does not matter how this N is represented. Even though the working of this machine M will highly depend on how this N is represented, but it really does not matter because we already have seen that it does not matter how you represent a number. It only changes the way we write this number or we show the number. Uh, the, the properties of number do not change. It, the number remains the same. It, ex it exactly remains the same. So we can make our life easy and we say that let us represent this number in, in binary. Okay? So we only, can, we only consider the binary representation. So binary representation means that this n can be written in zeros and ones. If we are only allowing zeros and one, it means that we can restrict our alphabet to be just zero and one. We don't have, we don't need anything more than that because every binary number can be represented as a long string of zeros and ones and so on, right? So let's try to construct 
a machine in, in terms of finite automata using states and transitions, which decides whether the string that we are reading is an even string or an odd string, right? So let's see what is an even number. An even number is a number that ends, even number ends in zero, two, or four, six, or eight. But these are the decimal representation. What are the binary representation of zero, two, four, and six? Since in binary numbers, we either have zeros and ones, right? So this means that if, so if I have a binary number, a long binary number, a string of binary number, for example, one, zero, one, zero, one, one, zero, then can you tell me this is an even number or an odd number? Yes, even number. This is an even number. Why it is an even number? Because the least significant bit is zero. If the least significant bit is not zero, then it is an odd number because we know that all the position in a binary number system are powers of two. And the only power of two, which is non-even is, is zero, right? So two power zero is one, but for every other power X of two, where X is greater than zero is even, right? So we have one, then we have two, then four, then eight, then 16, then 32, then 64 and so on. So every power of two is even except when the power is zero. In that case, the number is one. So in order to make a number odd, this bit has to be on. And if this bit is on, it means the number is odd. And this bit is the least significant bit, right? So if the least significant bit is zero, then the number is even. And if the least significant bit is, is one, then the number is odd. Now, let us try to construct the odd number, right? Suppose this is our starting state, let's call it Q1. And if in we are state zero, if you are in state zero, then it means that this is not just starting state, it is also accepting a state, right? What else we can read at Q1? We can read one. If you read one, then it is not an accepting state because this, this will make the input number an odd number, not an even number, right? But if in state Q3, we read one number, which is zero, then it, it makes the number even again. And if you read one, then it remains odd. So this is a simple finite automaton with just two states, which actually replaces this X box which we call M. Okay. Now I will explain more about it. So, so, so there was a question that, uh, what does it mean by acceptance? So, so the, what does it mean by acceptance is, is the answer yes or the answer no. So when we say that a string or the input is accepted, it means that the answer to the computational, the underlying computational question was yes. And if the string is not accepted, then the underlying computational question of the machine is not. This is what we mean by acceptance of a string or non-acceptance of it. Okay, so if there is any, if there is any question, please uh, let me know. Otherwise, I think we should stop here. Uh, and uh, yeah, so is, is there any, any question that you have? Sure, can we possibly have an infinite loop uh, within our finite automaton? Uh, what do you mean by infinite loop? Like for example, at, at the state Q1, we keep getting zeros. If our uh, string is the, the answer is both yes and no. Okay, and I will tell you why the answer is both yes. Uh, the problem is with the infinite actually. So infinity since, I, as I explained, infinity is not a number, right? So it is impossible to have a string of infinite length. Right, so we, right now, we are not allowing any string of infinite length, right? We only is allow there, strings there of finite length. Uh, there is no limit. That's 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 the issue. That's the, the, the that's the problem. For example, if I say that there is a set of in, uh, natural numbers, the set of natural numbers contains zero, contains one, it contains two, it contains three, and so on and so forth. What is the biggest number from the set of natural numbers? You don't know. 
there is no there is no upper bound on the set right the set is not bounded above by any number it is impossible to find a number which is bigger than any other number in the set of them. because whenever you would say that a number x is the biggest i can tell you that x plus 1 is even bigger right so if x is a number which is from the set of natural numbers then x plus 1 is also a number from the set of natural numbers. so there is no bigger number there is no biggest number in the set of natural numbers right and since infinity is not part of natural numbers so it means and it is also not a number therefore the string that you will pass here can have an arbitrary length it can have one element or two elements or one billion elements or one trillion elements or maybe the number of elements is equal to the all particles all particles that are present in in, in the entire universe or maybe 500 times that number or 1 million times that number it it doesn't matter right but that number is still finite so so the thing is that the infinite is much bigger than any finite number that we can think of so if you if i tell you that 10 power 100 is a big number it's really a big number right but infinite is yeah. much much bigger than this number so if somebody says that okay what about uh, 10 power 10 power 100 it's really a big number but still less than infinite what about 10 power 10 power 100 so we can keep adding and and uh, we can say that it's it's a big number but it's still smaller than the infinite so infinite is not a number so we can have an arbitrary uh, input arbitrary size input and uh, suppose uh, suppose that, that this machine takes uh, one microsecond to process one bit of this space okay just one mic microsecond or forget about microsecond let's say it 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 processes 10 trillion bits in one microsecond right even then if i pass even then i can pass a long string and that string is still finite such that it will take more than billions of years to complete scanning right so so the question over here is not that we will go into a finite loop or infinite loop uh, the question more is that what is uh, in infinite time because there is no such concept as infinite uh, so remember in the beginning in the first lecture i told you that in, in this course we would mostly be interested in in mathematics and computation but sometimes we delve into uh, philosophy so these are not directly mathematical and, and, and computational question question uh, they are more appropriate for philosophical discussion uh, but of course we can we can we can do that discussion. yeah i got it thank you is this thing clear to everyone uh, and i think it, it I, I think it should be clear that what does it mean by acceptance uh, what does it mean by processing and what does it mean by doing computation so this machine is doing computation that's why we call it uh, a computation model and why we call it computation model because it answers a computational question the question was is the input number an even number or not and this machine will tell us whether that number was even or not right since a number can only be even and odd so if this number is not even it also solves the question whether a number is odd or not right so if the number uh, so if the input ends in q1 it's even and in, in, if the input ends in q2 uh, sorry q2 uh, then it is it is odd right so sorry i did not pay attention to this one. Uh, but anyway so this is a very simple basic computational uh, model the finite automaton uh, finite automaton basic computation model in this finite this particular finite automaton is a very simple solution to the question a computation question that we asked in the paper okay any other question okay so i will end uh, this lecture today's lecture here uh, i know that we have time till 8:25 uh, but i have to be somewhere uh, i have another uh, i mean uh, event that i need to attend uh, so we will end the lecture here uh, and i will post the um, video and uh, and the and the notes and everything uh, at most by tonight uh, so if you missed anything you can watch it again and you can see the notes that i've written uh, so thank you very much for your time uh, thank you very much uh, uh, being here and i will see you again on saturday um so if in, in the meantime if you have any questions please send me any yes yes please
Yes, sir. I just need to ask when will you upload problem set one? I will upload problem set one either today or on Saturday. And how much time will we get to solve it? You will have one week. One week. Okay, sir. Thank you. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much for your time. I will uh, sign off now. Is there any question? Okay, thank you very much. Take care for the office, and I will see you again on Saturday. Bye bye. Take care. Uh, I'm going to